All right. So given how raving popular my political videos have been so far, my last video cracking down on the voting patterns of Melissa Price gave a whooping 40 views in two weeks. And has got half the views of my video in which I pretend to be a loser from Google Plus, minus the pretend, but that's an aside. So far, my last video has only produced comments asking where I got those race car matte shorts from, and the answer is... It's Benny, bitch. So sucked in everyone who wanted to know where to get these. You can't. They were in the back end of a backwater Vinny store. So you're the loser. I'm the winner. No, <laughs> I thought I'd make a video cracking down on just one policy that Melissa Price has voted on and do it in more detail. This one is particularly disturbing. Melissa Price voted against the Customs Amendment Growing Australian Export Opportunities Across the Age Pacific Bill 2019 Protect Australian Industry. I don't think I'll ever figure out how to discreetly say the name of policy amendments. <clears throat> Pushed by Labor's Madeline King. I did not add this particular vote to Melissa Price's list in either videos because I felt this one needed a bit more research. And more research has been done! Research I should probably be conducting with my life choices more than with Peruvian free trade agreements, but oh well, what is done is done. To give a preface rundown, Melissa Price and her party were the ones trying to pass a customs amendment bill. The Labor Party wished to amend it so that it wasn't complete dog shit, and the Liberal Party attempted to vote out the amendment as a result of this amendment. The Customs Amendment Bill seeks to make true free trade agreements with countries like Indonesia, Hong Kong, and really peruable places. Honestly, I didn't think South America had much to export besides violent American Bakus and questionable furry art. One, and arguably two, is enough for the former here. And as for the latter, you know what, free trade is pretty cool. Free trade agreements are ratified by amending the Customs Tariff Act of 1995 to basically make items from those countries less expensive to trade. The concept of the bill was supported by both parties, with the idea of an Asia-Pacific free trade agreement argued by the Labour Party for a long time. Probably for so long that it was one of the few events that happened on April 11th, 1954, the most boring day in history I recently heard. However, there are a handful of differences in how each party wanted to implement the bill. The Liberal Party wanted to use this bill as an opportunity to allow foreign labour to be imported with reckless abandon and let private foreign companies sue governments for ungodly large sums of money in the same vein as when tobacco company Philip Morris attempted to sue Australia because of plain packaging legislation introduced by the Labour Party. You know, the same legislation that gave birth to this legend? The Labour Party wanted the free trade agreements to simply allow for the nation to take advantage of its exporting nature without compromising sovereignty or job security. These are two parties. This is the same policy, same countries, but with two very different amendments. Devil is always in the details when it comes to politics. This is why you should care about which major party is in power. Because although it may sometimes seem they agree on the same things, the differences in how they want things done can make a huge difference in the way of life in Australia. The two parties are the same narrative is something that is spruced by the Murdoch and Nine Fairfax Press in order to demotivate people from voting in preference of Labour or not vote at all. But that is a rabbit hole I will not be jumping into. Western propaganda model is a fun little thing, but it's f***ing boring to read about. Labour market testing. First interesting piece of information in this policy decision is labour market testing. With labour market testing, you can test your labour before you buy. There's an entire market of labour to choose from. We have painful labour, comically easy labour, uncomfortably shaped military planes being used as makeshift flying doctors in Mikathara labour, and a fan favourite, the alternate universe where Labor Day was actually about the act of giving birth instead of the 8 hour work week Labor wanna see 8 hour work week in Australia, by the way, just what you guys should know. That is what I originally thought Labor market testing was. 
According to the Home Affairs website, labour market testing is when an employer wishes to bring a worker from overseas, they must first go through a process to test whether or not they're able to get workers for the job in Australia. The visa that allows for imported foreign labour can only be introduced when the position has been advertised in clear English with the appropriate information like position description for at least four weeks to give Australian workers time to respond. The advertisements have to be placed in at least two prominent recruitment places such as websites or major media outlets like my YouTube channel. If you want to follow the trend, subscribe now. If you hate following trends and want to set one, also subscribe because I lied about being a trend. At first, the Liberals wanted to pass the bill without proper labour market testing. Labour market testing ensures that foreign workforces are only allowed to work if there is a genuine lack of Australian workers. Essentially ensuring Australians get the first chance at any job in Australia. The Labour Party has ensured that this market testing occurs properly. Out of the old, in with the new. The Customs Amendment Bill introduced new treaty stuff with Indonesia, but in the Liberal Party's draft, there was nothing to suggest the old treaties, which allowed foreign companies to sue Australia, would be terminated. Or, running a one country, two system government? Do I smell it, commie? Authorised by the Loom Heightened Australia Party, Jonathan. The Labour Party sought to terminate the old treaty with Indonesia once the new treaty was implemented in order to eliminate the ability for multinational corporations to sue Australian government for Australian government attempting to introduce legislation that would affect the profits of a corporation. Because what right does a publicly elected government have to damage the profit margin of my cigarettes by informing the public that they kill people? Absolutely outrageous! And infringement on my freedom! Not yours, because you're trapped in an iron lung! The aspect of the old treaty that Labour sought to eliminate were the ISDS or Investor State Dispute Settlement Provisions, a term that in the first half makes me think of the Hyperion Corporation from Borderlands, and the second half makes me think of a regional property settlement agency. The provision provided a foreign company the framework to sue a government if said government enacted a policy that hurts its profits. One example could be if the government wanted to make more forest a protected area, a foreign logging company could sue the government as they won't be able to log that area. The court is held by a third party outside of the government's jurisdiction and will only be accessible by foreign companies, not domestic companies. This third party system is run as a tribunal of three corporate lawyers, which means it doesn't follow normal court rules and cannot be appealed. The Australian Council of Trade Unions, which is the body that represents nearly every union in Australia, attack this policy in particular, labelling it as the most threatening and the most... Alright, no, this is a union, sorry. <clears throat> the most threatening and the most dangerous part of the trade agreement, as it gives an unacceptable expansion of the rights of corporate investors at the expense of democratic governments. Fuck yeah! I'm the key guy in the iron lung, that's why I have a big interest in this policy. Just hear my voice, that's six packs a day, cunt. The Labour Party has fought to remove these clauses from the Customs Amendment Bill in the Senate. Here, we see a clear difference in the details between the Labour Party and the Liberal Party. The news would be very unlikely to report little details like this. Partly because it would be boring and uninteresting detail. This is why we need to put Anthony Albanese's Labour Party above the Liberals this election. You don't have to put Labour first, just above the Liberals and Nationals. If you want to enrol to vote, but don't want to suffer through the tedious process, then contact me and I'll try to entertain you as you approach your journey. Your own personal Cicero. Minus the stabby stabby, but still with the 100% certified coffin mother wildness. Weirdness, it says weirdness on the document, not wildness. My message boxes are very open at the moment, given that my obvious autism has destroyed my prospects of being a social butterfly, more than a butterfly knife would destroy a stick of home brand salted butter. 
this election, vote for whoever you want. I just ask that after showing you the evidence here, you put the Liberal and National Party's last this election. Take advantage of preferential voting. Ensure we get a half-decent government run by a DILF, while letting yourself a vote for joke parties like, I don't know what political parties are running this election. Um, let, let's register a party called the Piss Action Party. Just, just to piss off Singapore. I'm sure they're not important to Australia's economic future or anything. If you don't believe me, then listen to this interesting individual I discovered called Marielle Smith talk about this bill. You know, during the outro, because usually it's just a black screen, so this is an improvement, I guess. Ciao. Together with Labor's Shadow Minister for Trade, Ms Madeleine King, my Labor colleagues and I sought various assurances through J Scott's report Indonesia and Hong Kong, which were reflected in its recommendations and general commentary. Of the issues raised, these included the termination of the existing Indonesia-Australia Bilateral Investment Treaty, or BIT, the implementation of a process of economic modelling for future agreements, the need to ensure that requirement for labour market testing is included in all trade agreements, and recognition of the very troubling political situation in Hong Kong. The Indonesia, Hong Kong and Peru agreements all include modernised and improved ISDS provisions compared to the existing BITs. The modernised ISDS clauses in these agreements include safeguards on public health, environment and prudential regulations. It is therefore assumed that Australia will be protected from action against important policy reforms we may undertake in areas such as public health. And these are protections that history tell us we most definitely need.